Hey there friend, Cal Kanai here and in this quick video I'm going to share with you five copywriting exercises to help make your copy silky smooth. Stick with me all the way up until the very end. So we're in this video, we're talking about copywriting and it's no secret if you've been on my channel or watched my videos before, this is something that I absolutely love. I, I do it less now as a CEO running a fairly decent sized team of about 20 people at the moment, but you know, whenever I can, I still dive in there and, and love writing copy. It's, it, it's just something that speaks to my core. I, I've been clear about the fact that I love sales and copywriting is a way to just craft words in such a way that generates a sale. In fact, I just got a new copywriting book a couple of weeks ago, arrived at the house, I can devour that entire thing within just a couple of hours, right? Very rarely do I get a book that I'll just consume the whole thing in one single sitting, but copy, copy will do that for me. All right, so uh, I'm gonna give you some, some exercises. Before I get into exactly what these are, make sure, again, if you like the channel, if you like the content, if you've appreciated some of the content we've been sharing with you, then take a moment to subscribe, hit the bell notification so you get notified about future videos. Drop a like on the video, right? If you like it, like it, it just seems fair, right? And furthermore, drop a comment, let us know. How, how can I help you better? What questions do you have about digital marketing, sales, business, whatever? Uh, and you know, what questions do you have about copywriting? So uh, again, engage and that keeps the channel going so I can continue to drop value for you in these uh, videos. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So my first tip is actually the one that I use the most often, uh, this exercise, right? It's called the brain dump. Is that a, is that a U or a W? Do you, I mean, who cares, right? All right, so the brain dump, what is the brain dump? Well, typically when I sit down to write copy, the very first thing that I do, whether I'm writing an email, whether I'm writing a sales letter for a sales page, what I do typically is I just brain dump what's on my mind about whatever it is that I'm selling in that piece of content, right? So I don't wanna think about it, I don't wanna be overcritical about it, I don't wanna go line by line, I'm just trying to think like, if I were having a conversation with somebody right now, which by the way, if you're conversational copy works out really well, depending on the, the medium that you're using to deliver your copy. But when I think to myself, if I were having a conversation with somebody right now, what would I say? And I just vomit all of that stuff onto the paper. Don't care if it sounds good, don't care if it's pretty, I'm not worried about using fancy words or you know, crazy copywriting tricks and tactics, no. I'm just trying to get my message out, right? I just wanna barf that thing up, it's gonna look like a pile of well barf, and then I'm gonna clean it up and make it nice afterwards. The reason that, I, and I stumbled upon this from a very popular copywriter in one of, uh, in a book that I was reading, and uh, I stumbled upon that and it really changed my copywriting for me because at first I would sit down and it would take me so long to write because I would be thinking about like, what's the best way to say that? What's a, what's a good word that I could use for that? And all this stuff. And instead, you know, now I just dump it all out onto a piece of paper or you know, onto a Google Doc, or whatever it is that I'm using. And I just dump it all out in the form of just, it's raw. And then I go through and I clean it up afterwards. And it makes sure that I get the whole entirety of the message out so I don't miss anything. Uh, and then I can go in and clean it up and make it pretty, make it consumable, make it easy for my reader to, to devour in, in, you know, as they read that email or read that sales copy. So that's probably my favorite exercise of all of them is just clear my head about what I wanna say, get it out there and clean it up afterwards. Number two is the punch list, what I call a punch list. And I've seen this called a few different things and, and from different copywriters. I call it a punch list. What's a punch list? Well, every now and then when I'm writing copy, I'm looking for some words that are more punchy, right? That provide more emphasis. We like to use words that we don't, they don't necessarily get used all the time in our regular day-to-day -day speech, right? Uh, and that can make them a bit more attractive, right? And so what I want to do, what I'll typically do is I'll use a thesaurus. I'll be going through and I'll say, you know, I've used that word a few times or that word's just not that sexy. Let me look for another word and I might go look in a, in a thesaurus. 
and I'll find a better word, one that I really like. I'm like, oh yes, that's a crafty, clever word um, and still clear because you, remember, you want to be clear more than you want to be clever, okay? So it's still clear. They're going to know exactly what that is and it's sexy. You hardly ever hear it used, so it's attractive, right? Like catastrophic, right? Hardly ever hear the word catastrophic. You hear it in headlines from the media, but typically you're not talking to your friend and going, Oh man, did you hear about the catastrophic event that happened to William the other day? You know, you, you don't do that, right? So, and I'm just pulling a random one off the top of my head. My point is that as I go through that thesaurus and I pull these words, I'll start keeping a spreadsheet and I keep them in the form of like positive words and negative words, right? So positive words that I'm using or sometimes even phrases and negative, right, in a spreadsheet. And sometimes I'm just going through stuff and I'm, I'm writing and I'm like, ah, you know, I need to punch this up a little bit. What can I use? And I'll pull up that spreadsheet in a Google Doc and I'll start scrolling through it and I'll see, oh, that's good verbiage there. So I don't have to go to a thesaurus uh, because I've retained all of these words in no particular order. Again, I'm just, you know, are they positive words or negative words? And the other thing that, I'm, that I like about this is that as I'm reading those, all of those words are, are you know, bouncing around in my mind as I'm going through that spreadsheet and it helps me think more creatively as I'm going through the rest of my copy. So that punch list becomes a list of like short, punchy words that you know, pump up the value of the, the copy without me having to go look through the thesaurus trying to replace words for every little thing in my writing, right? So I open up the spreadsheet, I look at it, and I say, oh, this is good stuff, this is good stuff. And some of those words are just gonna stick and bounce around in my mind, and I'm gonna use them later in other parts of my copy for that presentation, whether it's a webinar, whether it's a sales letter, whether it's you know, a, a video sales letter, whether it's an email, whether it's a post on social media, whatever it might be. So a punch list has been really beneficial for me as well. All right, so number three, study great copy right? So one of the things that I do very often is I am, I'm on the list of pretty much all of the world's best copywriters. Like if they have a list, I'm on that email list. Why is that? Well, I'll get on their list so that I can read their emails. I can see what they're sending out, right? I want to continue to be a great student of this craft that I want to master. And one of the best ways to do that is by modeling, right? Another example, I'll give you another example. I get asked a lot when I speak at events, I get asked a lot, you know, how did you become such a great speaker, right? Because typically when I speak at an event, maybe not on these YouTube videos, but in my, in my, at events, I'll typically get a standing ovation, right? I'll get people moved, I'll get people crying. And people will ask me, well, where'd you learn to be, become such a great orator? Which I'm not saying I'm a great orator, but that's a compliment that I get. And they'll ask me if I've taken classes. And I say, no, I didn't take classes. You know what I did? is I listened to hours, like probably days, months worth of audios from all of the greatest speakers that I could get my hands on. Tony Robbins, Les Brown, uh, Jim Rohn, uh, some, some speakers that came from the world of network marketing, some of the network marketing speakers out there like from old Amway tapes and stuff. I mean, these guys were prolific speakers selling people on, you know, get three people who get three people who get three people and you're gonna be rich forever. I mean, that's clear. <laughs> you get my point, right? So I would listen to these great orators and over time what happened is I naturally started modeling that, right? Because anything that you surround yourself with, you will become a part of, right? So immersion, immersing yourself in it. If I wanna be a great copywriter, then I wanna immerse myself in great copy. So I actually have a folder that great copywriters go into and every now and then I'll pop into that folder and I'll just start reading some of their emails so I can immerse myself in some of the most brilliant minds when it comes to the, the art and science of crafting words that sell. So remain a great study, great copy from the best in the world, right? All right, so number four, study your avatar, okay? So study the people that you are trying to sell to, okay? That means going into Facebook groups, going joining forums, going out to social groups that, like in your community. If you have a group that uh, as a social group that, that gets together once a week, once a month, once a year, whatever it is, and these are people that you're trying to sell to, go join those groups. Get around, the, every niche has language that is unique to that niche, right? I grew up in Hawaii, uh, around a lot of surfers, right? 
Uh, we used to use terms like hang 10, right? Uh, stoked, uh, barreled, or whatever it might be. There's just these little things that, that we would say that pretty much you'd only know what a hang 10 is if you're a surfer, right? You'd only know what it means to get barreled or bl blown out was a term we used to use a lot. You only know what that means if you're a surfer. Somebody says those words, you instantly recognize, oh, that person is like me, that person is a surfer, that person understands me. And that's the point. That in er whatever niche you're in, there's gonna be vernacular that is unique to that niche. Understand it, right? Understand those people. What language do they use that's specific to that audience, right? When you think about another example, cryptocurrency, right? From hanging around a lot of cryptocurrency friends for a little while there. You know, oh, it's mooning. Like nobody knows what mooning is. I mean, mooning used to mean that you pulled your pants down while you, you know, and showed it out the window to somebody else on the highway. That's what mooning meant. But <clears throat> just weird terms like that. HODL, H-O-D-L, right? HODL is another one. In all of these niches, you're gonna have words that are unique to that niche. And by you using those words properly in your copy, you are instantaneously building rapport because you're telling the potential prospects, I am like you, right? Or I understand you. And we want to buy from people that we know, like, and trust. So not a big mystery there. All right, one more. So this is one of my favorites, right? Before I write a lick of copy, uh, I will ask myself, what are the problems that my customer exp is experiencing, my potential customer, my prospect, what are the problems that they're experiencing? And then I will ask myself one uh, a follow-up question. What are the negative emotions that those problems are causing for them, right? So if they're having a problem getting their business to succeed, well, one of the negative emotions that they might be experiencing is embarrassment, shame, right? They're, they're, they, they, don't, they, wanna, they don't wanna look foolish in front of their friends or family for having this business, but it's not succeeding. Uh, maybe they're confused, frustrated, overwhelmed, afraid, uh, you know, feeling, unworthy, all these sorts of things. I wanna figure out what are the negative emotions that they're feeling, and then the follow-up question is, what are the positive emotions that they would rather feel, right? Why do I do all of this? Because all buying decisions are emotional. If you get nothing out of this, remember that one thing. Because most people, when they go to try to sell something, they think about it logically and rationally. They start to build a logical argument about why you should want my thing. Nobody gives a shit about your logic. They make a decision based on their emotions and then they back up that emotional decision with logic and rationale after the fact. That's how a buying decision is made. So before I uh, will start writing a ton of copy around any particular promotion that we're doing or a series of emails that we're building or any of that, I'm gonna ask myself, what are the problems that my prospect is experiencing right now that I'm, you know, that my pro that obviously I'm selling them a solution. So what are the problems that they're experiencing right now? Great, and I'll list those out. Then what are the negative emotions that they're experiencing right now? And I'll list those out. And then I'll say, what are the positive emotions that they would rather feel? And I'll list those out. And I will literally, as I'm writing my copy, I wanna make sure that I weave in those negative emotions, right? I, say, I'll, I might say something to the effect of, I remember when I felt unworthy, right? I had spent all my time, all my energy, uh, all of the money, money that I didn't even have, trying to build a business, and it had completely failed, and I felt like I was entirely 100% worthless. I was embarrassed to show my face in front of my family. Right? Because I, and I can say those things because I know what negative emotions they're going through. So maybe I'm, I'm telling it in the form of a story about myself. Or maybe I just straight up say, you know, right now, you might be feeling embarrassed. You're ashamed to show your face in public because you know that your business is failing and you don't want to be seen as a failure, right? Or whatever it might be. I know how to, uh, because I take the time to write, to, to map that out, I know how to use, I can know that I can use those words in my copy. And then what I wanna do is show them that, hey, when you get my, th here's what you would rather feel, right? So I might say, if I'm doing a story, today though, I'm more confident than I've ever been. I'm more clear, crystal clear about my future, my purpose, my passion, my inspiration in life, right? That I am 100% committed uh, to creating the, the to manifesting the goals that I've set for myself, right? That nothing can stop me and I will roll out, you know, that this is where I'm at today with these positive emotions. And then I'll say, and you know what changed all of that for me? This thing that I'm trying to sell you, right? So that our solution becomes the bridge between this negative place that they're in right now and this positive place that they wanna go, right? 
And if we can use more of those emotions in our copy, our copy is gonna move people better anyway because people are emotional creatures, right? All the buying decisions are emotional. So again, all of these are ones that I use. I strongly recommend them. This is just a few right off the top of my head. Some great copywriting tips for you. There may be some other videos around here that are recommended on other copywriting uh, content that I've done before. Go ahead and consume that. Check the description down below for links to more content from me and free value that you can get. Uh, and make sure that you drop a comment, drop a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and all that jazz to make sure that I'm able to con continue to add value to your life and hopefully you got value out of this. I will see you in a future video, my friend. Take care.